So guys, I'm in front of Nyakasura Secondary School where boys were scats in Fort Porto region. And guess what? First shock, I'm on appointment. I made an appointment to come here, but first shock, I'm in jeans. They have a special attention announcement that no lady is supposed to wear skirts as you're seeing them on the street. So hi, hi. <laughs> we finally met him. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So guys, today we are here in Yakasura uh, School. We want to actually uh, just take a little bit of tour around the, uh, the school. And uh, guess what, guys? Today it's uh, a, a, a privilege. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I've met other YouTube YouTuber from Kenya. Yeah. So guys, kindly support me. This is UG Power Two Five Six. Subscribe to my channel. I'm on the road to three K subscribers. Guys, we are going back to town to look for a skirt for myself. So let's go. A few moments later. So welcome back on these beautiful channels, Shami Vlog UG and Pasha TV from Kenya. Guys, we are at the school and right behind me it, it says it all i can't say anything beyond that because you know it has a lot of rules yeah i don't want to be wrong so let me give the mic to this for to introduce the school thank you thank you thank you so much hello sons of atlas welcome to nyakasura school the only school yeah this is only the only school in uganda as it is said that there are only two schools in uganda whereby one is in the northern hemisphere and that's nyakasura school and the other one is the other school in the southern hemisphere and that is entire school so you're welcome to nyakasura school and feel at home by the way we have been educated they have given us serious education these are not skirts a lot of you guys mistake these to be skirts these are these are called kilts, they are not skirts. Let's go have a tour around the school. So on your entrance you'll meet a very gigantic gate, big at that. Oh my god, do these pillars represent something? These pillars, first and foremost, as you've seen, this is a school. Firstly, as you see, it is protected by the two lions to prove that everyone who goes through this school is brave and stands tall to say that I went, I went through Nyakasura school. So guys, right now we are, we are going to take a tour around this beautiful school. Yeah, I, please, if you take me back to school, just bring me to this school. So how are meals here? We didn't ask about that. The meals, yeah. they are very good. And our menu is that we eat posho on Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, we take sweet potatoes. Then on Thursday we take rice, then on weekends we always take matoke with beef. Then morning breakfast, it is catered with escorts. Then we even have evening breakfast, evening tea, which works as just a dessert for those kids. Then there is another tea at night for those people who would like to extend to around 12 a.m. First way, have you ever had a school where they give you evening tea? <laughs> Do you have chicken menus here? Yeah, chicken menus is, is mostly during holidays or the public holidays in the country or mostly on weekends and when we are ending the month oh my goodness guys i personally i've never had a school where they give you evening tea and in the middle of prep if you would you wish to extend your preps they'll give you tea and free escorts yeah, the bread escorts for. throughout the year yeah there are different escorts sometimes they give us buns and other men other days they give us donuts I must go back to school, oh. <laughs> Just come to Nyakasura. I'm but I and think I'm too old for this. Yeah, I, I finished my senior advanced level long time. Oh. Yeah, but still, if you have some relatives, you can bring them because you know it is the school. The school. Not a secondary school, not a senior secondary school, not a high school, but the school. The school. Yeah. And I've told us you, you don't call yourself students. No, here we are not students, we are global citizens. <laughs> Because Why the, global Why the, global citizens? the moment you're in Nyakasura school, first and foremost, you must see far. You're not supposed to stop here. That's why you're called a global citizen. You're competing internationally. Oh. Yeah, it's not that you're competing nationally like to Africa, no. To the trouser, this is the elevo uniform. Then, then the, the kills are to the ordinary level uniform. You know, as the curriculum of Uganda, we have the ordinary level and the advanced level. The kilt, it is to the ordinary 
level, then the trouser, it is to the advanced level. Do these ones have the... Guys, this is a skin actually. It's a skin. I thought it's leather, but it's a skin. Do they come in one color? No. There are different colors. There are those ones that are round, like this one. There are others that are black and white, because mostly, like, it depends the skin where it has been manufactured from. You manufacture them from Uganda? Yes. Yeah. Because the height and skins of a, either a cow or a goat. So guys, they are manufactured from Uganda. So let's take a tour around the school. My name is Reverend Belinda Richardson. And uh, I'm the headmaster of Nyakasura School. I'm very grateful first and foremost that uh, our school is going viral globally. Uh, and currently, before I tell you the history of the school, my students, I don't uh, greet them as uh, students. I don't greet them good morning students. I greet them good morning global citizens. Because in the previous episodes, uh, this um, coverage went viral. I received several information from German, from UK, from US, and uh, that's when I see our friends from Kenya, I feel delighted to give you uh, the history and uh, all the information you need about this school for, for visibility. First and foremost, <clears throat> first and foremost, this school started in 19... 26. Yes, and it is remaining uh, with about two years to make a century. Actually, in 2026, we are going to celebrate a uh, hundred years of the school. 2026. Uh, in the month of March. Therefore, preparations are on and some arrangements are on to this event. Uh, this school started under the ways uh, leadership of Lieutenant uh, Commander Ernest William Eberhold Calwell. Uh, this was a, a, a soldier uh, with, with a high recognition of the order, with the order of British uh, Empire in the Royal Navy. Therefore, he fought in the First World and Second World Wars, and he won several accolades. He was a soldier, he was an engineer, he was a teacher of science, he was a lawyer, he was a, a highly military trained. But when he came in Uganda, but before he came in Uganda, he developed some health complication. And this health complication, while he was in his home country, Scotland, uh, with the, the coldness of the winter and the other, the, the, the doctor's recommendation that was that he needed to live more in a tropical country with some relative warmth. And when he came, he settled a bit in Kenya. But um, Kenya is equally somehow cold in, in the highlands. And then he somehow moved again to Uganda. And when he came to Uganda, he settled in Uganda Kingdom and he started teaching at King's College Udo, which had started, of course, a bit uh, earlier in 1910. Or slightly earlier, slightly earlier than that. Now, while there is a, a perfect teacher, we had two students there from Toro. There were two students from Toro studying in King's College Budo. And one was uh, Komuiswa, and another one was uh, Biara. And uh, these two students would walk from Fort Porto all through to Kampala, to King's College Budo, to study. 
And when you see on the photograph, you see one of them Komuiswa there next to him. Uh, that one in the, in, in the shot. That's the Komuiswa who actually convinced him to come to the Toro. Now, while he was in King's College of Udo, <clears throat> he was very industrious, very innovative, and very creative. And he, he proposed to the leadership of Uganda and King's College Buddha that uh, they adopt the Scottish uniform, the kilt uniform. And uh, the Uganda being uh, very conservative and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, they cherish their tradition very much, the, the, this, this took some time to be accepted. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, Carl Wyan started developing some negative energy. And in the process, he started uh, opening up his eyes to some other places where he could easily be, maybe uh, uh, try to introduce this innovation. Then there was an attempt from Ankole. Uh, from the Omukama then, whom they were calling Omugabe. And there was also an attempt by the fellow student who was in senior three called Muiso and Viara to talk to him that why don't we also take you to our king Kasagama by then? Uh, Kasagama is just uh, the opposite here, is Dawudi Kasagama Chewambe. Uh, if I introduced you to him, he's likely to develop interest and you establish a similar school like King's College Budo in his kingdom. Then they walked, they trekked all the way from Kampala to, to Uganda. You can imagine the courage of a senior three student uh, trekking all the way and coming to the palace to meet the king. And it was bushy and with the animals and it was not as you can imagine. Now he met Omkama Kasagama. And Omkama Kasagama Chebambe uh, accepted the idea of establishing a similar school like King's College of Udo in the Toro. And in 1926, uh, Commander Calwell left Uganda and came and settled in Fort Porto. And he was allocated, he was showed three places where he would establish a school. One of the places is currently called Iwale because that's where there is a foot, there is a, a foot of one of the ancestors, one of the Bachwezi, uh, that uh, is very historical. Uh, in, uh, in the history of this school, that from there, the, 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 the Mochwezi in question uh, moved, and the, the, second leg, the second leg was in the Ki, Kigere, near Saka. And that Lake Kigere also belongs to Nyakasoya School as a tourist site. Then another place that was showed to him was uh, Saka, where the currently there is mountains of the Moon University. Yeah. And another place he was showed was here, where we are. And uh, uh, yes, and it was all bush, of course. And when he came here, he walked down the valley there. When you walk down there, you'll find a stream of water. Uh, and that stream of water moves in a very strategic way that there is a point where it reaches and it has some falls. And he felt that these falls, if enhanced, can generate electricity. And if these falls, if enhanced, can generate and pump water into the school. And this water was a bit salty. Uh, it passed, it, it, the, the water was passing through papyrus uh, swamp and the uh, valley, and it was somehow salty. Uh, uh, and salt 
uh, in uh, Rutoro, in the local language, is called Eksura. Salt in the local language is called Eksura. And uh, if, if it is little, it can be called Akasura. If it is big or a lot, it can be Eksura. And uh, this is where now the name Nyakasura starts coming out from. Because it is a long stream that is salty, that is sweet, that is Kasura. Therefore it becomes Nyakasura. But there were no buildings around. Therefore there is a nearby primary school near the church, which the Omokama uh, Chebambe had uh, constructed, and that is St. John's Cathedral, our headquarters where the bishop sits. There is a primary school there called Kabarole Primary School. Therefore Nyakasura School first started there. And they had some students there. Komuiswa abandoned his studies at King's College of Udo to stay with the uh, Commander Calwell in the adventure, in the various adventures that they were going through. And then uh, in their walk, they walked across. The, we, we have a hill across the, the swamp that we call Kaliango, Kaliango Hills. And Kaliango Hills is also very interesting has some soil which is like naturally made um, naturally made uh, concrete. Uh, if you sit, if you, if you try to dig out, you find sand, it is like mixed with the, uh, with the cement, it is like, it is already a nice mixture, very nice gravel up there. And therefore they felt if we could concentrate here, we could make very good blocks without requiring cement, which would be expensive to transport. Therefore, they started making blocks, Komiswa and Commander. And uh, if you go there, you would find the depression where they made the blocks from. Now, they would make, dry, and come and build here. This is the first block that they built, this building where we are seated. And this wall is 98 years old, but very strong, and you cannot nail a nail there. You cannot drill a nail through that wall. Made out of mud and water and the blocks without cement. Now, um, but he preferred, most of the time whenever he would be free, because of the medical recommendation that he needed some warmth from a tropical setup, he would sit around in front there to receive some sunshine. Now when you move out, you'll see there is a green in front of the school. And that green, people don't walk there. We preserve it as a green. It is a monumental kind of identity of this great school. You only walk there with great and rare permission. But we preserve it because it is uh, an area which was a compound of commander. Now, commander introduces uh, the Scottish uniform here, where the boys put on the kilts, uh, of course, inside they put a shot, which is khaki. Then on top they put a wrapping, a wrapper, which is a kilt. If you, 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 you are not careful, some people have mistaken it to be a skirt, but it is not. If you look at it closely, it is a, it is a wrapper, and we call it a kilt. And he didn't want to call it a uniform. We called it a, we, he called it a combat. Therefore, we called it a combat. And this combat of Nyakasura school is made up of the shirt, the tie, the sweater, the belt, the kilt, the shirt inside. There is a small bag that they put in front there where they keep the pen and some little pocket money. That is called a sporan. A sporan. Then you go on, on the legs. 
the, uh, the Nyakasura is very cold. Uh, and it was generally very cold even uh, at that time. We are near Mount Renzoli, the other side. We have a swamp down here. Therefore, sometimes it is very cold. Now he felt the legs could be covered uh, with some warming kind of element. And uh, those are called hostops or leg warmers in, in the simple language. And then you put in the socks. You also put on the so short socks. Not necessarily white. Any short socks, decent socks that can be down the host tops or the leg warmers. And then you put on your shoe. And then you see a Nyakasura school student walking. Now, this has made Nyakasura's identity unique, near, and far. And the all the students of the school and many students outside there prefer to come to Nyakasura school to put on this uniform, which they call omchenche in, in our local language here. That I must put on that omchenche. And at that time, this school, he put it at a very competitive academic standard. Very competitive academic standard. And to qualify to join Nyakasura school, you needed to be top notch. You needed to have scored the highest grade. Therefore, competition was between uh, Budo, King's College Budo, and Nyakasura school. Therefore, you do not just come to Nyakasura school unless you had performed extremely very well in the national. And by then, they were not the national exams. We were doing uh, Cambridge certificate examinations. And these were done by East Africa. And by then, East Africa was made up of Kenya, uh, Tanzania, and Uganda. And uh, in 1964, 65, around there, during Reverend Perrin's uh, time, because this school has been headed by two reverends, Reverend Perrin and myself, uh, in, the, in the 98 years of its existence. During that time, Nyakasura School uh, became the third in the whole of East Africa. Therefore, it ranked very highly academically. And in the national grading, it was the first school. And uh, many people thronged, wished, desired to come and study from this school. And uh, therefore, since then, the school has produced uncountable men and women of very important contribution to the country and to the globe. And we have around 427 girls in the school and around uh, 800 or so boys in the school, giving a total of above 1,200 uh, students. Um, uh, the, the school with uncountable um, alumni in the school. Very many of them. Now, very many. This school has some other unique things. It doesn't call a headmaster a uh, headmaster only. Anyone who comes to head this school is called a commander. Because the commander, when he, even, when he died, he was buried here. It is only the grave of commander which is in Nyakasura school. Therefore, commander is treasured so much. And when you move out, you're going to find his portrait. Yeah. And that is commander's portrait. And when you come here, you take a photograph of, with commander, and that is the identity. The anthem of the school is not called the school anthem. It's called a school hymn. School hymn. Hymn. Hymn, like a song, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a, a hymn book, yes, worship. Because it is actually a worship. It has a lot of worship. Because um, um, in one of the stanzas, it, it, it has a very nice stanza which says, May the joy of serving others be to us. A true reward. Let us love 
indeed as brothers, as disciples of the Lord. Therefore you see, he was also a Christian, as a missionary. He set up the church. You will see a very beautiful church in the center of the school there. And also that gives a unique identity of uh, Nyakasura School. And many churches and many countries have come and copied the architecture, the architect of that church and uh, made a duplicate of it in their respective countries. Um, the, I have already told you the uniform is not called uniform here, it is called a combat. The students who have gone through this school are not called old boys and old girls, just. They are called alumni. And you know that is a vocabulary for universities. Yeah, yes. But uh, we call them alumni. It's just like a campus. It, 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 then, another important thing you need to know, just right from what you have said, mm -hmm. it, is called, it is not called Nyakasura Secondary School. Yeah. It is called Nyakasura School. And if you attain a one point and you risk in public or in your speaking and you say Nyakasura Secondary School, the OBs and the people who know can even grab your mouth <laughs> and say, what are you saying? Repeat it. Yes, yes. So that you say, the school. Yes. Others yes. just stop there, the school. Yes. Once you say the school, then you are meaning Nyakasura School. Yes. However, later, there emerged another school in Imbarara, which is called Intare School. And we call it the other school. Therefore, this one is the school, this is, this is the school, and then the other one is the other school. Now, that when you talk of Nyakasura School, uh, you, you mean, when you talk of the school, you mean Nyakasura School. And this name is treasure to very many people, uh, those who have studied here and those who have not studied here. Uh, one important thing why it is called a school, why I have tried, I have tried to follow up a bit of this, uh, of this uh, name. Commander didn't have had a major mentality that the products from the school should not look for employment, should go and be self-reliant. Therefore, he didn't want to promote only one thing, academics, no. He wanted each product of the school, he, he equated it to uh, a school of a university. Because actually, it is, one, it is him who dreamt that where currently Mountains of the Moon University is, would be a branch of Nyakasura School University. He said, I think when I go there and establish one school, then here I will put the university, in Ibale I will put there something else. And we are lucky, we are happy that much as the Mountains of the Moon University is not belonging to Nyakasura School, but the dream was first uh, born by commander. The, the, now, that when you would come here, you would learn carpentry. There was a strong carpentry workshop. Every product of this school knew how to make their own stool, chair, bed, door, and also to roof their own houses. So it's also examinable, or just uh, an extra curriculum? At that time, it was examinable and then an extra curriculum. He also established the first and only electricity, this school. Uh, as I told you that there are falls down there, he upgraded them to a level of generating electricity. The Funyakasura school was generating her own electricity. Then he brought um, the, 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 a system of pumping water by, by, by itself without using power. If you visited, you would see, and we call it the heart of commander. You would see how he made the high drum. Now the water comes in the drum and then it comes and hits the machine. The machine pumps back the water through the pipe. Then the pressure with which it pumps it pushes it up to the tank here and which is about a kilometer or two. You can imagine. Yes. 
water being pumped naturally without using electricity. And that is the water which has sustained the school up to today. We don't use national water, we use our own uh, generated and pumped water. Now, uh, the design of the dormitories, the way how he designed the houses. Here we don't call them dormitories. No, we call them houses. Okay? <laughs> uh, uh, no, barrier house. We call it barrier house, Cooper house, Komuiso house, uh, Kasagama house, Apollo house, Commander house, Damale house, Joan Penn's house, uh, Rugomayo house, that is newly constructed, which is containing just Kaliba and Annette Bachelor. These are called houses here. And um, we don't call them dormitories. No, we call it we call them houses. Uh, and when you see the architect, the design, all things which are constructed here are geometrically constructed. You, you, if you stood at a certain point, if you looked at a panorama view, an overview of this block, you'd enjoy the geometry in the construction of Nyakasura School. Some... Yes, if, if you, 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 you took uh, an overview uh, or a panorama view of the school, you would enjoy. Mm -hmm. Each construction is in a certain geometrical dimension. And um, uh, what is also very interesting across is Canonapolo. And Canonapolo is also church founded. And it, were, it was the same engineering technique with the whites and missionaries at that time that constructed the two chapels. And the tips, the highest tips of the two chapels are exactly parallel and perpendicular and horizontal at the same point, up there. And therefore, the school has grown with this history. The school has maintained this culture. And recently, it won a, a trophy of, uh, of cross-cultural foundation Uganda where I participated and submitted a, 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 a proposal, and we won it among the schools which have preserved the culture of the school, and we got some, some, some great support from there. And um, we have also tried to preserve it. The OBs and OGs outside there love their school in a way I cannot describe. They treasure the school so much, they don't like hearing anything bad taking place in their school. And um, they like only the good things about their school. They have done a lot of renovations in their school. They have lobbied the government to support the school so, so much. Uh, you have walked through, I think, and you have driven through a Tamaka road all through. We may be the only school with such an opportunity. This is the effort of government and the OBs. You'll see all renovations taking place here. Maybe the only major thing that uh, I have done here, which has been done by parents, is the construction of Rugumayo block during my predecessor, Frank Manindo, and the current uh, perimeter wall fence, which has been constructed uh, in my three years' time that I have so far served the school. Therefore, as I am here, I am cognizant of the culture of the school. I am sensitive to any changes of the school. I am cognizant of the love of the school. Myself, I'm not an old boy of the school, but I have picked interest to learn the history of the school to the extent that I am able to fit into it and then be able to serve the community that God has commissioned me in to serve. You've talked about a trophy, and I see very many awards here. So maybe, what's the secret of success? Uh, that is exactly where I was going to take you next. Mm -hmm. I was going to take you to the school again, another component of the school. You had to learn some carpentry. You had to learn uh, electricity generation. You had to learn water generation. You had also to acquire a skill. And uh, these skills were multiple. And more especially, the three pillars upon which Commander founded this school. Commander founded this school on three major pillars. One, the fear of God. The chapel is in the center. 
And here there is no inactivity every morning from Monday to Sunday that begins without going to the chapel first. That is our culture here. From Monday to Sunday, the first thing from 7 o'clock is chapel. Then from prayers, go and do other things. Then, the fear of God. The second one was promotion of games and sports. The third one was hard work. Therefore, there are no uh, and hard work under a very important motto, which is extracted from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 45. I did not come to, to be served, but I came to serve. That is where Jesus Christ was washing the disciples' feet. Therefore, we normally write our, our motto as to minister and not to be ministered unto. Actually. And that is our motto. Therefore, we, we aim at serving others with all, with all our heart. And we, 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 we derive another component of games and sports. He built it so much. And Nyakasura School is known for games and sports. The first cricket game in Uganda was played at Nyakasura School. And that was around 19... 26. And up to today, our cricket oval is still there, and we win uh, both locally and nationally. And in 2022, uh, me, me came in 2020, uh, June, that's when I, I, I was posted here. We, we managed, our students here managed to penetrate and enter the national team and represent Uganda to play in the World Cup of Cricket. Five of them. And in 2023, two of them, and two of them are playing for the Rwandan Club of Cricket. They are for, but they are students here. But they come and take them and do that work. Then football, then frisbee, uh, netball, uh, basketball, volleyball, uh, badminton, Rugby, uh, chess, lawn tennis, table tennis, to mention but a few. Recently, we have introduced the, the dance sport. Swimming, swimming also. Those are among the many uh, sports. Then go to the clubs. The clubs also many and very engaging. Currently, we have my predecessor, Frank Manindo. Uh, with the many others, also was following the footsteps of this kind of uh, idea, started uh, the, the agribusiness club. We have a strong uh, farming enterprise in Nyakasura School. If I took you to the animal husbandry, if I took you to the animal husbandry, you'd find there good and model farm of cattle. You would find there piggery. You'd find their portrait. You, I have introduced the goats uh, since, uh, since I came, the goats. Then the banana plantation. Then you'd find the fruits growing. You'd find a greenhouse where we grow vegetables uh, throughout the year. And uh, this, this agribusiness, we have reinforced it. And it is uh, also a big income earner for the school. We, we have also many other clubs, like the Scouts Club, like uh, the Scripture Union Club, like the YCS Club, the Patriotism Club, the Wildlife Club, um, the Debate Club. Now, I want to mention about the Debate Club. One of the competencies that the commander wanted out of his products was the ability to express yourself. And this was through debate. Daphne Nyakasura historically has gained prominence in a debate. Now, those trophies you see are not trophies we win uh, regionally. Uh -uh, those are national trophies. Those are trophies you find us engaging with Budo, and we win. You find us engaging with Intare, we win national trophies. And... Uh, uh, for, uh, therefore, those trophies you see filling my, my, my office are the trophies which have come from clubs, 
largely debate, a good business, uh, scout, to mention but a few, which have come from games and sports. Because in majority of those games which I have listed, there are areas where we are very powerful, uh, regionally and nationally. Uh, plus many other accolades that we get as a result of our good performance. Uh, I have had some people calling it a scat. And even the, these friends of ours who came from Congo, they, they, they came with a lot of anxiety. Uh, how, uh, let us go to the school where boys and girls put on skirts and let us see it. Then my friends from Ghana also came saying, let us go and see this school where boys and girls put on skirts. Uh, 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 and uh, and uh, it seems that is the same thing which has brought you here amazingly, that you have come to see um, a school where boys and girls put on skirts. Yes. <laughs> but when they come here, they are given this rich history. Mm -hmm. They are given this information. And they come when they are very appreciative that it is not called a skirt. It is called a kilt. And this kilt is a part of the combat. And many, uh, many OBs, even those in high offices have kept their kilts. And sometimes when they come here for alumni reunion, they, they, they come with their uniform. Find an adult. And when they come in their suits, they go to the store to buy the, 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 the kilts. Those who can find something fitting them, they, they take off the coats and whatever and put on. Uh, the, 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 the. I have found amazing love uh, of the students uh, who passed through here uh, about their school. The, their f misconceptions have been there uh, about the, sc the, the school's uniform. And those who come here, all of the sudden, even the senior ones, first go through some, yeah. some walking uh, incapacitation of how to walk and how to, 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 to sit in the class, the boys. But the good thing, inside there they have a shot, shortly they get used and treasure it very yes, much. Put on trousers. What about the ones in trousers? Now, uh, when you cross and you go to A level, that is the uh, advanced level, senior five or senior six, you can put on the trouser, uh, which is khaki. But the casual uniform out of the class is also a trouser, black trouser. Uh, they can also put on a black trouser, and that is their casual. But when you are moving out of school, for any school function, any school identity, whether you are in A level or O level, you must go in a kilt. Yes, you must go in a kilt. Whether you are in the in debate and you are in senior six and you are going to debate at the floor of parliament or in the state house or in national or internationally, kilt. Because this is the identity. These are the things you can put in for, for the identification and the classification but, and management, but uh, the identity is a kilt. Um, there is no uh, direct link uh, between Nyakasura School and Kabalega, much as I know Kabalega. But one thing I can say, uh, most missionary schools, most missionary schools at a time, uh, promoted students putting on shorts uh, to trousers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be be because if, if we could go to King's College Bujo itself, the, 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 the all-level students put on short. Go to Mengo Senior. Go to Ndeje. Go to Kabalega. Uh, come here. Go to Ntare. Uh, most of those uh, missionary and traditional schools felt uh, this could be the identity, but there is no uh, collaboration, collaborative agreement in the in the wearing between the two schools that I know of. Maybe I could be educated a little more along the way as I continue gathering a lot more about these schools. Thank you. The OBs, the OBs who are teaching here, 
Um, or during the teaching and learning process, they wear as teachers uh, professionally in their trousers, but let it be a function. If there is a, an interesting, fun, good, memorable function, they they pick on their kilts and, and, and they put it on and they become very smart. It is occasional, but it is not a, a regular requirement. As a school, um, the, 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 the major challenge maybe I would say uh, currently is in the structures are, are growing. The structures are growing old and I would need some great facelift and the new structures then uh, because at that time they had even uh, constructed some with the asbestos uh, sheets and some still have those roofs and you know how uh, cancerous they are because they have uh, uh, those exogenic, uh, exogenic rays that uh, can cause cancer, then uh, uh, the population of the school is increasing and therefore we need more infrastructure in the school. Um, uh, the, of course, other dynamics of, uh, of increasing prices and economic situations and uh, sometimes the school is close to a mountain and uh, when there is some insurgency uh, because in the western region here, uh, sometimes, uh, some time back, we, we, we were inv invaded by some rebels, uh, the ADF rebels, and they like hiding in the Renzor Mountains. At one time, they sloped and, uh, and killed our students in the neighboring institute called Kichwamba. Uh, therefore, sometimes those scares come in, but the government has contained and provided enough uh, protection and guidance. But the major challenge, I would say, currently are uh, improving and expanding on the infrastructure. Maybe, yeah, like, there is a time I was going through YouTube on some video, and most comments were, these people are promoting gazing here. Yes. So, in the comment section, then others were defending, then some were like, yeah, that's, that's why they were. For them, they still know that it's a scat. Yeah. How do you defend that? It is still a misconception <laughs> and uh, a very unfortunate one and uh, coming from ill information yeah. and uh, lack of adventure. You know, uh, for you, you, I thank you that you have taken a step and come here. Many people like uh, speaking with authority on things they have not even visited, on things even they have not seen, but you find a person claiming authority. Now, uh, when you come here, you'll see the boys putting on shorts and on top a wrapper. Which wrapper is a kilt? And this kilt is well uh, wrapped with a belt, you tuck in with host, host tops, those are leg warmers. There is nothing feminine you see on a boy who is putting on a uniform of a kilt. There's nothing you see. And putting on a kilt without a leg warmer is an abomination. Therefore, therefore it is a misconception out of uh, lack of exposure. But if you came here and saw the respect, the boys accord the girls. The girls accord the boys. And the way how the boys are put on their combat, this mystery of saying that it is uh, promoting gayism, uh, and this of gayism is a recent development, by the way, in Uganda here. And this school has been in existence for about 98 years. Therefore, it is a misconception and um, very untrue when you are in Yakasura school.